Let's discuss Max's time and animation controls. Directly underneath our viewport, what we see is what is called the time slider. This slider allows us to scrub through our animations frame by frame. So while holding this down with the left mouse button and dragging to our right, we're going to be able to scrub forward in time. Scrubbing to our left will allow us to scrub backward in time. Underneath our time slider, we have our trackbar, which holds our frames as well as any keyframes that are going to be stored on each frame. Now, bringing our attention back to our time slider, we see these numbers to the center of it. The first number shows us our current time, so I'm currently on frame 1. And the last number shows us the amount of frames we have in our active time segment. The active time segment basically shows us the amount of frames we can scrub at a time. So currently, the active time segment in this scene is frame 0 and 70, or 70 frames total. And we'll look at a way we can actually update this length. But bringing our attention back to the time slider once more, we see these arrows to the right and left of it. The right arrow allows us to scrub forward in time, frame by frame, and the left arrow will allow us to move backward in time, frame by frame. The time slider is a great way to really study your animations, making sure they're going to be at the quality you'd like them to be at. Now, bringing our attention to the trackbar, again, we can update the amount of frames we see here, and we can do that by holding down Alt, Control, and the left mouse button, either to change our current start time to a new start time. So notice, as we scrub, we're going to be able to see what our new start time is going to be looking at the pop-up. So if I were to let go, I can already know that my new start time is going to be at negative 27 because of the pop-up. And also as we now scrub to this now new start time, we can definitely see this more clearly looking at our time slider. We also see that our frame amount for our active time segment has also been updated as well. Being that I've added 27 frames, we now have a total of 97 frames in our active time segment. Now, holding down Alt, Control, and the right mouse button will allow us to change our end time. And we can see as we move this number, it also updates in our active time length. Great, I'm going to go ahead and bring this back to 0 and also 70. So we want to get very familiar with these controls because they're going to allow us to work comfortably with our animations. Now you may notice this little button right next to our frames. This is basically our miniature curve editor. Clicking this we can get to our curve editor very quickly. Just a miniature one. Um, we're not going to talk about the curve editor just yet. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But I just wanted to show you that. And we can close this by simply clicking the close button. Great. Now. We can also right click on our trackbar and get to different options. I'll start from the bottom. Go to time. What this is basically going to allow us to do is go to whatever time we have right clicked. So if we right click on frame 50 and choose go to time, notice we're going to be able to go to frame 50. So it's a quick way to navigate through our animation. Now right clicking on the trackbar again we see the configure menu which allows us to do a number of things either hide our frame numbers or show them. We can show our selection range, which is useful for modifying the position of keyframes in time. And we'll take a look at that later on when we talk more about keys. We can show our soundtrack. So if you've imported any audio within your scene, you can see its wave and even animate to that by checking on Show Soundtrack. So the wave is going to appear right at the bottom in the trackbar. I'll go ahead and toggle that off. And what we have lastly is snap to frames, which allows us to either snap our keyframes to integer frames, keeping this on, or we can actually move their position in between frames, which is very useful for getting a more accurate result in your animations. But that's more for complex animations. And what we also have right clicking again is a filter that allows us to see what type of keyframes we're working with either all keys or we can see just transform keys position rotation and scale or the keys on the current transform tool that we have selected 
and then we can see them from object and even materials. And again, we have more filter options underneath. And then uh, looking even um, higher, uh, we see different uh, settings that we can use to edit our keyframes. And we're going to explore these a little bit later on, again, when we talk more about keyframes. So that's a look at our time slider and also the trackbar. Now, underneath our trackbar, we see our animation controls. This big key button will allow us to set keyframes. And the keyframes that we set, that's all determined from our key filters menu. So clicking on the key filters quickly, we can see that we can either set position, rotation, scale, and even IK parameter keys by default, or we can toggle these off uh, depending on what we'd like to set keyframes, what, what transform we'd like to set keyframes on. So I'll go ahead and close that out. What we also see next to the big key button is auto key mode. We see set key mode. And this drop down menu right next to the auto key button, this actually corresponds with the set key mode. If we had any selection sets in our scene, let's say we made a selection set out of this ship, by using this and being in set key mode, we're only going to be able to set keys on this object, being that it's in the selection set. So this is a great way, again, to filter the uh, keys that we set in our scene. Now, right underneath this drop-down menu, we have a uh, basically default in and out tangent type setting. So this sets the in and out tangent types for new keys that have been generated. And we're going to take a look at this further as we talk more about the interpolation of our keyframes. So that's our animation controls. To the right of this, we have our time controls. So starting from our left, we have the ability to move to the start time of our active time segment very quickly by using this first button. And its mirrored button allows us to move to the end of our animation very quickly. Next to those buttons, we have the ability to move frame by frame. Or if we were to go down to our key mode toggle, clicking this on will allow us to move key by key. Notice we cannot move our time slider at all, not yet, until we select an animated object. Now watch this, if we were to click these, buttons, we're going to be able to move key by key. Great. So I'll go ahead and turn that off once again, and we can see our buttons change as we do. Now to the center, we see our play button, and this is going to, again, allow us to simply play our animation. So this is very similar to what we'd see on a remote control. Now something very interesting about this play button is that if we were to hold this down we can get to another option which allows us to play only selected objects so if you had several objects in your scene and you just wanted to focus on the animation of one you can simply select that object and choose play selection great so that's a great way to filter what is played in your viewport and again it plays based off of what's selected so if I just wanted to select these two planes and play their animation, that's all I'm going to see. Great. So that is a very handy tool. I'll go back to the default, play animation. Underneath this, what we see is our current time field. So this basically shows us our current time. Right now I know that my current time is frame 1. And we can um, even update this number. So if I wanted to go to frame 50, can just type that in and notice now we're on, we're on frame 50. We also have a slider right next to this that allows us to scrub frame by frame as well. And also a hot key for scrubbing frame by frame is the greater than or less than keys on your keyboard. So using the less, uh, less than key you can scrub backwards in time and using the greater than key you can scrub forward in time. So that's a quick look at our animation and playback settings or playback panel. Now, what we also can do is view our time configuration dialog, and we're going to actually discuss that in the next lesson.